Hello and welcome back to Pratham Test Prep YouTube channel. So this is Booster Vocabulary session number 32 and let's have a look at the very first word for the day. So the first word is Bonnie. Now if you recognize the picture, that is a still of Ranbir Kapoor from the movie Ye Jawani Hai Diwani, right? So if you look at the mnemonic, we can say something like Bunny from Ye Jawani Hai Diwani looks very attractive. The word Bonnie in itself means attractive and beautiful. Have a look at the sentence over here. It is one of several inns in the Lake District offering bonny accommodations and bountiful breakfast. Now, first point over here, inns basically means the tiny little hotels that are there on every street in the city. Second, we are describing the word accommodations, which is a noun, and hence the word bonny in itself becomes an adjective, right? So not too difficult. Let's move forward to the next word. The next word is eon. Now imagine something that goes just on and on, right? So it's been eons since I saw a movie at the multiplex. When you want to say that it's been eternity, that something kind of has been happening, or you want to describe something that is eternal, something that is never ending, to do that, we can use the particular word eon. So when you say it's been eons, clearly you're making it plural, which makes the particular word a noun. Again, uh, easy breezy word. So let's have a look at the third one. So the third word is shambles. Now, imagine that, you know, we all have one particular room in our house where we just kind of try to dump everything whenever a guest arrives, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, when you're staying in a house, everything cannot be very in its proper position and state. So you will eventually be using things and keeping them here and there, right? In our busy lifestyle, we don't always have the option to keep everything in the right place at all points of the day. So imagine in such a case when a guest arrives at your house, what is going to happen? So it's sort of very shameful when guests come and the house is in shambles. So when you say something is in shambles, it basically refers to a state of total disorder Basically, you're describing something where there's absolute chaos, right? If you look at the picture, you might recall that maybe a room or something looks like that, isn't it? So the earthquake left the whole town in a shambles. So what happened is an earthquake took place and because of the debris and everything falling apart, right? The buildings just, just getting disrupted and falling to the ground and raised to the ground. There are, all you can see is just, pieces and all ruins are there so because you're saying in a shamble it's a state hence it is a part of speech that is now let's move forward to the next one so next one is peccadillo now the mnemonic sounds very silly but works no one is pakka right and then we all do mistakes so we are saying relatively anything that is a small mistake right Anything that is a minor sin, anything that is a minor fault is considered to be a peccadillo. Now imagine you have a sibling and your parents get to know that your sibling has stolen money from the house. Whereas all you have done is just broken a glass. So what you committed was a peccadillo probably and what your sibling did was actually a major mistake, hence a blunder. So look at the sentence. His political career was marked by numerous peccadillos, but no huge scandals. So you're seeing n number of tiny little mistakes were committed by the politician, but then there was no major, um, you could say, scandal that kind of took place, right? And that kind of works because mistakes are something that being human beings, we all kind of commit. Now you're seeing numerous peccadillos. Numerous is an adjective. You're describing something. So that something, peccadillo, so to here, becomes a noun. And in proper way, you could say this is majorly a common noun. The next word is ingenue. Now, we all have seen Ye Jawani and Diwani. Remember the song that is shot during the entire uh, holy festival thing, right? Bilam Pichkari. So the exact lyrics of that particular song are Bilam Pichkari, Jo Tune Mujhe Mari, To Sidi Sadi Chori Charabi Hugai. So if you look very carefully at the mnemonic A written on your screen, you see Tune Mujhe Mari, To Injanu Charabi Hugai. So we have replaced the word Sidi Sadi Chori with the word Injanu. 
in general generally refers to an innocent and a young naive woman so two things what you have to be particular about over here this number one you're talking about a young woman and number two the young woman is very innocent it's not she is not cunning right so which means that you cannot use this particular word for a woman who is either old or for a woman who is very street smart and very cunning so both the adjectives are important in the meaning number one innocent number two young and of course woman you can't use this word for a man in her latest film she plays the part of an ingenue so you're talking about some actress who is movie acting in a movie and she's playing the part of a siri sadi chori right a young naive woman now since the meaning says a woman that means you're referring to a person therefore the part of speech again over here is a noun i hope it is clear till here i'm moving forward to the next word the next word is hankering now okay two situations number one that is already written on your screen which says on a hot day when you're sweating you will yearn for a handkerchief right so imagine the day in the month of april may when it's extremely hot 30 40 almost degrees outside right and you're really sweating and you do not have a hanky or a tissue to wipe off your sweat or in other words you have a terrible cold you have a running nose and you forgot to carry a handkerchief and you can't really even find any tissue papers right so what are you going to do you're going to yearn and just crave for a tissue to wipe yourself so hankering refers to a strong desire right but the strong desire is for something in particular and that could be anything of course depends from sentence to sentence and your usage so a strong desire to have something it refers to your yearning for something right your urge to get something so have a look at the sentence i have had a hankering for a pizza with olives all afternoon so i have been yearning to eat pizza with olives on it throughout the afternoon you have that craving you have that yearning you are just constantly um, waiting that all you can have is pizza in your day right now since we are saying a strong desire a yearning right a hankering so since you are using an article to describe something hence the part of speech of the word hankering in this case also is a noun let's move forward to the next word which is manacles now manacles is like a combination of two words which says man plus obstacle right that means manacle so when we are restrained what happens our hands are not free so manacles refers to shackles it refers to fetters it refers to binding bond it could be sort of a bracelet a chain or also a band manacles prevented the bear from roaming beyond a very small area if you recall this in case some of you might have i believe a pet dog at home and you have tied a leash around the dog's neck right and what have you done is you have attached the leash to let's say to a particular door of your house so what is going to happen is the dog cannot move beyond a certain area so you're using that leash as a manacle as a way to prevent the dog from moving or roaming around apart from a tiny little area and probably you have done that because some guests have come home and they are really scared of your dog right so manacles prevented the bear from roaming around it kind of refers to this chain or the binding material that you are using now since it refers to bracelet and chain which are things and we know names of things are nouns hence manacles as a word also refers to a noun the next word is quiver now quiver is very similar to quiver and this is not just the mnemonic aid but also one of the synonyms interestingly right so to quiver means to shiver to tremble to quiver so when you're shaking right now that could be for multiple reasons number one you could be sick number two you could be really scared right number 3 you could be just nervous so that also is could be the case so the opera singer quavered on the high note right so the opera singer if you have seen on in some movie or if you were fortunate enough to actually watch a live opera show how the opera singer sings and you know we see the high notes moving ahead and suddenly the glass breaks right 
so that is how we i believe you always remembered uh, an opera performance now since the meaning of the word starts with two automatically the word itself becomes a verb so always remember to shiver to quiver to tremble all are similar in nature the next word is verb now verb refers to opposite of being nervous right now just imagine that uh, you do not really want to participate in a certain competition but your mother or your let's say your school teachers have forced you to do that and now you are forcefully participating you are extremely nervous so obviously you are not going to be very enthusiastic to participate right hence verb is the opposite of being nervous so when you have verb you have that vigor you have that enthusiasm you have that zeal that energy and that willingness to do something the actor plays the part of the superhero with tremendous verb and obvious enjoyment so the actor loved playing the role of a superhero obviously who would not like to play the role of a superhero right so he performs the role with a lot of enthusiasm with a lot of energy and hence it was displayed in his performance now since enthusiasm and vigor are nouns automatically verb being the synonym naturally becomes a noun however what you can remember is that this is basically an abstract noun because you can't really see or perceive it with any of your five sense organs this is just like a human emotion that can only be felt by the virtue of being human beings the next word is morsel so morsel is like a combination of two words which is more plus sel now obviously let's say you have 10 articles and you were able to make a huge sale today you'll obviously be remained with very little quantity right so morsel kind of refers to a small piece of food now look at this sentence the chef's cuisine is so good that diners will want to savor every morsel so the dinner the food was so delicious was so palatable for the guests that what they want to do is they wanted to taste and eat every single bite and they did not want to leave any piece at all of the food that they were given at or served at the particular restaurant so morsel basically refers to a small piece of food the mnemonic is not very direct you would have to put in a little effort to remember the particular meaning of this word right and since we are referring to a small piece of food which refers to being a thing automatically the word morsel becomes a noun well that's all for today's video and i'm going to see you in the next one till then take care good night and yes do not forget to subscribe to pratham test prep channel and also do not forget to click the bell icon thank you so much good night